Welcome to the first night of the first ever Orange County Seek Week. My name is Todd, and I'm one of many pastors who have come together in friendship, partnership, kingdom collaboration to make this week happen. Over the next five days, 120 hours, we're gonna see churches across OC unite and pray together like never before. And each of you will play an important part. Each day we'll focus on a song, which is a prayer set to music that's been claimed again and again by God's people for generations. And each night we'll bring a different region of Orange County into focus. Tonight, it's North Orange County. They're in view and we're excited over these next 30 minutes to show you some of the unique ways that God is moving in the cities of Yorba Linda and Berea, Buena Park, Placentia, La Habra and Fullerton. Right after that, we are going to dive into a live prayer session on Zoom that will allow us to cry out to God together in some really powerful ways. And some of the same pastors and leaders that you'll see in the next 30 minutes will be the ones leading us. So here we go. Let's get ready to hear songs, stories, and some encouragement from pastors across North Orange County. First, let's begin with a reading from Psalm 91. El que habita al abrigo del Altísimo se acoge a la sombra del Todopoderoso. Yo le digo al Señor, tú eres mi refugio, mi fortaleza, el Dios en quien confío. Solo Él puede liberarte de las trampas del cazador y de mortíferas plagas, pues te cubrirá con sus plumas y bajo sus alas hallarás refugio. Su verdad será tu escudo y tu baluarte. No temerás del terror de la noche, ni la flecha que vuela de día, ni la peste que acecha en las sombras, ni la plaga que destruye a mediodía. Podrán caer mil a tu izquierda y diez mil a tu derecha, pero a ti no te afectará. No tendrás más que abrir bien los ojos para ver a los impíos recibir su merecido. Ya que has puesto al Señor por tu refugio, al Altísimo por tu protección, ningún mal habrá de sobrevenirte, ninguna calamidad llegará a tu hogar. Porque Él ordena que sus ángeles te cuiden en todos tus caminos. Por sus propias manos te levantarán para que no tropieces con piedra alguna. Aplastarás al león y a la víbora, hollarás fieras y serpientes. Yo lo libraré porque él se acoge a mí. Lo protegeré porque reconoce mi nombre. Él me invocará y yo le responderé. Estaré con él en momentos de angustia. Lo libraré y lo llenaré de honores. Lo colmaré con muchos años de vida y le haré gozar de mi salvación.
this place you will rescue those who love you those who trust in your great name you will rescue those who love you those who shelter in that is beyond us, it is natural for us to try to find a place of safety or shelter, if you will. Most of us are sheltering at home, believing that if we stay home long enough, we will be safe. Our families will be safe. A lot of us are hoping that the government will keep us safe by giving us directions and guidance that we need. A lot of us are depending on science to give us the ultimate answer, the, the vaccine or whatever treatment. But truth be told, none of those things will keep us ultimately safe. They're not the final answer. The psalmist writes in Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. All of us will take shelter somewhere in our own competencies, in our own collective wisdom, in the government or in science, but where will we shelter? The psalmist declares that he will shelter um, in the presence of his almighty God, as if he is hiding under the shadow of the goodness and the omnipresence of God. That's where he will shelter. He will not simply visit for a three-second view or a 30-second view, but he will dwell there. He will live there. He will place his bed there, the, the shelter that comes from the Almighty. 
He declares, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, that my ultimate trust will be on my most high, my loving God. In this time of darkness, in our time of crisis, may we dwell in the shelter of the most high. Hey everyone, I'm Jay Williams with OC United. Hi guys, my name is Kevin Mowong. I'm the executive director of a faith-based nonprofit called Solidarity. Hey guys, uh, my name is Caleb Beller. I'm the pastor over at Calvary Chapel of Fullerton. Hey guys, uh, it's Mitch Fierro, one of the shepherds on staff here. Hi everybody, I'm Christian Esteban. I'm the executive director of Hoya Scholars. We're a nonprofit in Fullerton. And we're all part of an organization called Fullerton Act, a network of churches and organizations meeting needs in the city of Fullerton. And I was so excited to be able to share with you just a little bit um, of this kind of collaboration that's taken part uh, in the city. Uh, you're probably hearing um, about all of these amazing stories where we as churches and different ministries in the city have been partnering with the school district. And so they said, yeah, let's get on it. And within a week, uh, they emailed us seven schools um, with about 20 kids each school, about 140 kids. Um, 140 families really that they had targeted that were in need and uh, once we got the list man I was I was floored with how quickly you know churches started lining up saying hey let me take five parents let me take or let me take five families let me take ten families and we began to work with Caleb and we were exposed to the list and he actually asked us to adopt one specific school the cool thing was was that that was a school that God already began to open the door for us um, to love on and to meet some of their needs in the midst of this crisis. And so now, because we're working together with other churches in the area, and we're working together with the superintendent here in Fullerton, we get to go even deeper in relationship um, and, and, and meet some of the needs there in, in probably bigger, more impactful ways. Recently, when COVID-19 broke out, we started to hear the whispers of people just really running short on food. So I went and partnered with my friend and uh, partner organization, Boyas Scholars, I said, Christian, what, what can we do? So Christian put the word out and he started to hear from Vineyard Church. Pretty soon, before I knew it, there's these massive truckloads of people coming with all this food to be able to give out to um, all the community. So Echo Church jumped in, uh, In the Vine jumped in, and now we have five organizations and churches working together to be able to love the city the best way that we possibly can. Uh, we've been able to deliver now over 100 and soon we'll be coming up on 200 in the next couple of weeks. Uh, uh, grocery bags to over 100 families uh, in our two neighborhoods that we serve. And uh, we had a really cool story this last week. The operations manager of Flame Broiler reached out to us and said that they wanted to serve and offer up uh, bowls for families, low-income families in our community. And uh, Flame Broiler got its start actually in the city of Fullerton. Yeah, so we sent 22 families home, super excited. But even better than that, they said, we don't want to just do it once, we're going to do this for four weeks. Across the city, organizations and churches are coming together to care for our community as most vulnerable. And so it's a privilege to be a part of this. Thank you. In the middle part of Psalm 91, verse 3 through 13, the psalmist writes from personal experience and says, in the time of trouble, in the time of pestilence, in the time of disease, virus, or chaos, the God we serve, he will rescue us. He will cover us. He will shield, defend, and protect us. All this we will experience from our God if we do just one thing, and that is dwell in his presence. To dwell means to stay and live. As believers, it's just not enough for us to stay home in our fight against this virus or any other enemy. We have to stay in his presence. That's our home. That's where we live. We live in prayer. We live in worship. We live in our devotion to God. It is in him that we live and move and have our being. And then he says in verse 13 of this song, and God will protect us and give us power to walk over all of our enemies. As we continue our journey during this challenging time, let us remember that in his presence, there's both power and
protection in his presence. We don't fight to get the victory. We fight from victory. Stay in him. Stay the course. Hi guys, my name is Kevin Mowong. I'm the Executive Director of Solidarity. I'm here with Martha San Elias, who is our Community Development Lead in the Maple neighborhood. She's also a longtime Maple resident. Uh, when COVID-19 broke out, uh, she started hearing all this news from all of our neighbors uh, with some different needs and some different fears. So, Martha, when the COVID-19 first broke out, um, what types of fears did you hear from the community and what were you feeling during that time? Uh, lo primero fue miedo. La gente tenía miedo de, de de lo que estaba pasando, pero uh, también temor de que llegara hasta nosotros y, y después la, los mismos vecinos eh, tenían miedo de qué pasaría si, si nos toca a nosotros, qué vamos a hacer, qué va a ser de nuestros trabajos, nuestros hijos. Fueron muchas cosas que, que en su mente pasaban por todos los, los vecinos. Para mí fue como... Uh, 
me se sentir como frustración, frustración por, por, por aquellas personas que no pueden a expresarse especialmente muchos se detienen por el, el idioma, el idioma que es como una barrera para ellos, el temor de que qué tal si les va a pasar algo o les, les afecta si piden ayuda, si les afecta en, el, en un futuro, entonces son muchas cosas para ellos y, y es el, el que para eso nosotros estamos aquí para ayudar. Uh, I love how your heart was moved to compassion and you started to ask what, what can I actually do for my community, how can I love the city really well during this time. So at this point, Solidarity reached out to one of our partner organizations, Hoya Scholars, and Christian Esteban, who's the executive director over there, to see how can we attack this together? How can we help do something together? And at that point, we decided to rely on all of our donors and our sponsors and our church partners to gather as many food and supplies to be able to get that out to the community. And so every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Martha was actually here in this building, passing these things out, making home deliveries to all of the neighborhood residents who needed food during this time. Um, soon other churches decided to step up and we brought more and more food and pre-made packages. We were able to reach dozens of families per week, but still that wasn't, it wasn't quite enough, right? So Martha told me that there was a large population of people who still were having this massive food shortage and needed this. That's when our collaboration with Hoya um, expanded even more and we reached out to Vineyard Anaheim and Echo Church and the Vine Church. So Martha, now we got five entities working together, three churches, two nonprofits, all to love this neighborhood really well. How does it feel to see that happening? Uh, personalmente me sentí emocionada y bendecida porque, porque el ver este, a las familias que, que reciben esa caja de comida es una alegría y una bendición porque ya no tienen que preocuparse por el que van a comer mañana. Entonces, el ver también el, el lado de, del amor que le tienen a esta comunidad, el ver que muchas organizaciones, iglesias, des, des, donadores y todas esas personas que pudieron hacer todo esto realidad es, es para mí eh, una bendición y para toda nuestra comunidad. That's great. So now every Thursday, Vineyard Church brings a massive food truck uh, stocked with meats and dairies and bread and rice. And then Echo Church and the Vine Church come and they bring about 12 volunteers to be able to pass out all this food to 150 families every single week this is happening. Martha gets to do all the intake. She gets to be face to face with the community and the neighbors. She gets to hear what's going on in their lives at this time. And then she's able to stock every single family with bags and bags of groceries. Um, for people who are feeling very, very vulnerable in this time. Hey there, Seek Week. My name is Darren McWaters, and I'm one of the shepherds on staff at Fullerton Free Church in Fullerton. Excited to be joining together with all of you as we seek the face of God in prayer this week. In Psalm 91, uh, verses 14 through 16, it says, Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is a beautiful psalm. I mean, the whole psalm is beautiful, but this last section is full of the promises of God's deliverance. He talks in this passage about the fact that he will deliver us, that he will protect us. He says he will answer us when we call, that he'll be with us in trouble, that he'll rescue us and honor us and satisfy us with long life and a view of his salvation. I love all those promises, um, but even more so, I love the way in which those promises are revealed, the way in which those promises are presented to us. Because God here doesn't say that he will do all these things, the deliverance and the protection and the answers and the rescue. He doesn't do them because of our efforts or because of our striving. It doesn't say here I'm going to protect the people who deserve it or I'm going to honor the people who are worthy. He talks specifically about our devotion to him. He says, whoever holds fast to me in love, that's talking about our worship, our adoration of Jesus. He says, whoever holds fast to me in love, I will deliver. He says, whoever knows my name. So it's not just about our adoration and our worship, it's also about our knowledge of him, the relationship that we have with him. He says, if I'm in a relationship with someone who knows me, I will protect him. He says, when he calls to me, I will answer him. The answer of God is a response to the petition of his people. It's exactly what we're pursuing in Seek Week. God says, do you know me? Do you love me? Are you reaching out to me in desperation? Are you crying out to me in the times of trouble and difficulty? Well, the good news is, if you love me, and if you know me, and if you cry out to me, 
and I will not let you down. I will be there with you. If what you care about is me and my heart, your own good, if you pursue those things, then guess what? I will deliver you. And I love the fact that his deliverance isn't just based on the circumstance we're in. It's not just based on the hardship we've seen in the rest of this passage. It's not just based on the trouble. That the deliverance he offers is by allowing us to have real and lasting life. We think a lot about heaven sometimes as Christians, but this is talking about eternal life, resurrection life that we have, this salvation that he shows us that comes through Jesus, and it's a response to our adoration, to our worship, to our love of him, to our knowledge of God, and also to our willingness to just own the fact that we're broken and that we need him to call out to him and say, will you rescue us? I hope that in the midst of this seek week, you'll be encouraged by knowing that we serve a God who cares more about our love and our knowledge of him and our crying out to him than he does about all of our striving and our effort and our posturing, that he just wants us to seek him and to know him. And in the process of seeking him, he says he'll show up and he will be our redeemer, our deliverer. He will be present in our lives. I hope that you're comforted by knowing that that's the kind of God we serve. God bless you. I look forward to praying together with you throughout this week. We are so glad that you've joined us for the official launch of our first ever Seek Week. Right now, we're gonna direct you to a Zoom call that will gather Jesus followers from all over North County, all over Orange County in prayer over specific needs in this region. And this time will be led by some of the same pastors and leaders we just heard from. Please pay attention to the chat window. You'll find a link to take you to the prayer call there. And to stay on the journey with us over these next five days, make sure you register at seekweek.org. That link will also be in the chat window. And please spread the word to friends. It's going to be so exciting to see how this virtual gathering keeps growing as we cry out to God for our county together. And now my friend, Matthew Cork, who is the pastor of the Friends Church Tribe of Communities, is going to pray us into our Zoom session. Thank you, Todd. Would all of you join me in prayer right now? Father God, you are our refuge. You are our fortress and it is in you that we put our trust. We thank you right now for all the churches in North Orange County that are coming together, that God, your word and your glory and your honor is going out into our communities and into our world because of the body of Christ. Thank you for this time together. We cry out to you, we call out to you, we ask God that you would come and meet us right where we're at and that you will continue to use us in this season in unprecedented and in miraculous ways. We thank you, God, that you are at work. And we thank you that you are moving in your churches to go forth and to continue to proclaim the gospel. So tonight we stand together as one church, your church, and we lift up our voices in praise and in prayer as we cry out to an almighty God. Thank you for your love and your grace and thank you that right now in this season, we are experiencing you and we are growing deeper in love with you and we say thanks. Bless this time together to the honor and glory of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And it is his name we pray these things, amen.